Lao Tzu says, Those who flow as life flows know they need no other force. Lao Tzu was an ancient Chinese philosopher and writer who is known to be the founder of Taoism. He is also credited as the writer of Taoism's most sacred text, the Tao Te Ching. Taoism is a philosophy which teaches a life of ease, living in harmony with the Tao. The word Tao translates into path, method, principle or way, and Taoist belief is based on the idea that the Tao is an organizing principle of the universe, a natural order that one can come to know by living in harmony with nature. Taoism suggests that life is like the course of a river, and most of us are clinging to the bank, afraid to let go, and risk being carried along by the current of the river. At a certain point, each of us must be willing to simply let go and trust the river to carry us along safely. At this point, we learn to go with the flow. Once we've become accustomed to being in the flow of the river, we can begin to look ahead and guide our course onward. Thus, flow is about leading your life's course with minimal resistance. It is about allowing the course of your life to unfold whilst making conscious decisions about what's ahead of you, and in this video we will talk about six ways to be in flow with your life from the wisdom of Lao Tzu. Number one, let go of your ego. In the words of Lao Tzu, the ego is entranced by names and ideas. However, Names and concepts only block your perception of this great oneness. Taoism teaches us that everything is connected and we are part of a greater whole, that we are much more than our job or our physical appearance, and only when we let go of this false identity given by the ego will we be able to live a fulfilling life. By linking our identity to what we do professionally or the job title we hold, we put ourselves in boxes, and these boxes end up being our prison, as we endlessly strive to live up to these identities. If you focus too much upon labels, career titles and money, when you lose those things, you lose yourself. We need to understand that our name our possessions, our profession, what constitutes our ego, doesn't define who we are. The Tao says that which can be named is not the Tao. As soon as you place a label on someone, you reduce your estimation of that person to the expectations that label implies, even if that person is you. Taoism, however, doesn't discourage us from having goals and pursuing them, and instead asks us to not get too attached to the ideas or identities we create, because when we're attached to something, we hold on to it, and holding on to anything beyond its due time means we cannot let go of it, and so we move in opposition to the flow of our life. Many people, for example, go all their lives proudly attached to the job position they hold. They might have had one of the highest earning and most respected positions in their firm for decades, but their whole world comes crumbling down the day they get fired. This happens because we can't let go of our narrow self-identity. Instead of looking at the unity of all things and how we form part of a greater whole, we end up reducing ourselves to a mere job title or physical trait. We came into the world without any preconceptions. We had no concept of race, religion or social class when we were born. It is only when we grow older that we cling to these things, even believing they define us. We segment ourselves into groups and shun people who don't fit into the same bracket as us. The Tao Te Ching says forget the rules and flow freely in whichever way life takes you. We need to realize that we are already connected to everything in our lives that we think is missing, such as love, happiness and inner peace. We just have to align ourselves properly to find it. Lao Tzu teaches us that we are like an onion, and we must unpeel the different layers of skin to become free. He says, 
when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Once we become free, especially of the ego and false identities, we find all of the things we'd been longing for flowing into our lives in abundance. Number two, dare not to be first. Lao Tzu tells us that all streams flow to the sea because it is lower than they are. Humility gives it its power. Humility is one of the three jewels of Taoism along with compassion and simplicity. In Taoism, humility is translated as the phrase dare not be first. Taoism teaches us that we are all just a small part of the great oneness. We can imagine ourselves as a collection of rivers that are all tributaries to a single stream of water. Despite the apparent separation between the different rivers, they're all connected to the same source. This source is the Tao. If we apply this analogy to our lives, we'll find that much like the individual rivers contributing to that same body of water, we too are all a part of a greater whole, and we're governed by the universal energy common to all of us. In the hyper-competitive rat race we all call modern life, we very much neglect this wisdom. We all desperately wish to be the first one to do something or to go somewhere, but often that is too great a risk or requires more time and energy than is reasonable, as we are going against the flow of life. Also, competing and challenging others in order to be first can upset or offend them, and people often react badly to being challenged this way, sometimes even violently. Our efforts and struggles towards our goals creates an internal sense of value that often bears little resemblance to how valuable that goal is in reality. As a result, we become too hung up on labels and titles, social status, wealth, etc. So that when we achieve our goals, it naturally boosts our egos to a stage where we end up looking down on people who aren't on par with us. The truth is, no matter how much one competes and thrives, none of us are really self-made. Ask yourself, how much of your life have you earned? First, our lives depend on our parents. They feed us, protect us, and nurture us as infants. Did you earn it? No. Then, in your childhood, you had teachers who helped you learn to read and write, parents who clothed and fed you, a community that provided food, clothing, and entertainment. As an adolescent, you relied on your parents to feed you, do your laundry, made it possible for you to go to school, and so on. So now, as an adult, how much of your life has been earned? According to Lao Tzu, nothing. Hence, your life is a gift from everyone but you. You are where you are because of the benevolence and compassion of others. Hence, you cannot look at someone less fortunate and think that they earned their position while you earned your higher one. And therefore, you have no right to an ego. None of us have earned our keep. Humility, or not presuming to be at the forefront in the world, is the only truthful way to relate to the world and to others. It isn't a weakness. It's not a tool to get what you want. It is reality. There are different ways one can practice being humble. One of them could be taking a walk in the evening and thinking of everyone around you. Your family, friends, your neighbors, work colleagues, and so on. Now think about them without their labels or wealth. Consider what issues they may be facing. Some may have a troubled married life. Some may be struggling financially. Others may be struggling with addiction. Think of ways you can help them without any expectations. If you begin to see yourself as part of others' lives, their problems will become your problems, but by the same token, their joys will become your joys. Number three, let go of your desire to rush things. According to Lao Tzu, 
he who rushes ahead doesn't go far. We've all had those moments of being in the zone, where our actions happen almost subconsciously, and what we're doing just flows with no friction or conscious effort, like a well-rehearsed dance. In Taoism, this paradox of being in sync without any effort is known as Wu Wei, translated as effortless action or non-doing. Wu Wei is not so much about doing nothing, but is about aligning our movement with the greater flow of life. That is what it means to be in the zone, at one with what we're doing, in a state of profound concentration and flow, without any excessive effort or struggle. When we are in the zone, the world around us seems to slow down, and in that space, it is as if we become one with the very thing that we're trying to do. Take, for instance, the example of trying to fall asleep. Despite our best intentions, the more we try to force ourselves into a state of relaxation, the harder it becomes. Rather, it's much more helpful to simply let go. Staring at the clock, working out how many hours sleep you can still get, or trying to will yourself unconscious by thinking about sleep, doesn't work and won't do you any good. Simply observing our thoughts as they come and go enables us to surrender and relax as we slowly drift off in a daze. If we tune in and follow our bodies, things get done effectively, efficiently, and without extra effort. If we go against them, it takes extra time and energy to get things done, and in some cases, nothing will get done, no matter how hard we try. One can practice Wu Wei in many ways, but one of the better ways is to let go of your desire to rush things. Every time we want something, we want it at the drop of a hat. If your goal is to start a new business and achieve financial independence, you want those clients to come now. There is an energy of impatience that fuels our busy minds and prevents us from being present in the moment. No matter how hard you try, there is no way that success will instantly come knocking on your door. There is always a necessary process involved which cannot be rushed or concentrated. If you want to succeed, it's your duty to release those impulses and let the Tao do its work. This natural flow of things not only applies to our goals and visions in the professional realm, it literally influences every aspect of our lives. If you want to become better at any skill, there will always be a series of necessary steps that you'll need to undertake. The most precious things cannot be attained through shortcuts. Of course, this doesn't mean that by passively letting go, everything will fall in your lap. On the contrary, taking action is vital to achieving anything. But it can't come in isolation. Your actions need to be coupled with an acknowledgement of the natural course of things. Nothing can happen earlier or later than it should have. Number 4. Embrace Change To quote Lao Tzu, New beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. One of the greatest characteristics of water is that it handles all obstacles with the greatest of ease as it flows towards its destination. Water can adapt to any direction, and also, it's not limited to its one form. It can be steam or ice, thereby offering even more versatility in various applications. Just like water, Lao Tzu says we can also be in harmony with the natural flow of the Tao, the way of the universe. For Lao Tzu, one of the secrets of being in harmony with the Tao is to accept that living means to be in constant change. Life is like a storybook. It consists of several chapters, each bringing us different lessons and experiences. Unfortunately, our life is also governed by inertia, which makes us fixate on the previous chapter and makes it very difficult to move on from one chapter to the next. We are indeed creatures of habit, allergic to change and instability. We tend to face change with dread and aversion, 
instead of looking at it as something positive. But as Lao Tzu said, we need to let go of what we were in order to transform ourselves into what we might become. If you've lived in the same country for your entire life, for instance, and suddenly get a job offer that can boost your professional success, but that also means emigrating, it's entirely natural for there to be a part of you that's reluctant to take the opportunity. You're going to want to remain in the warm comfort of your own country, spending time with the same friends and acquaintances, going to the same restaurants and coffee shops, and having the same experiences. Or, for example, if you break up with your partner, you could experience a great sadness, a period of grief which is very difficult to recover from. You may find it difficult to look for another partner, or even get out of the house and meet with your friends. This behavioural tendency tends to block our vision of things in the long term. It's a sort of emotional myopia that impedes us from seeing how great things can be if we're just willing to turn the page to the next chapter. It is only by breaking out of the chains of our current circumstances that we can unleash the potential for growth. Number 5. Be content with little. Lao Tzu teaches us to Be content with what you have. Rejoice in the way things are. When you realize there is nothing lacking, the whole world belongs to you. Among the many things Lao Tzu was interested in, one of the most important to him was the feeling of inner peace and harmony. This, he claims, is impossible to attain when we're concentrated on the things that we don't have. The myriad material objects and earthly possessions that we think we lack, considering the age we live in, one where the world of social media and celebrity gossip are particularly prominent, Lao Tzu's sayings on this matter ring truer than ever. In today's day and age, people live stuck to their phone, scrolling through their sensationalized social media feeds. We've all stumbled across a friend's photo who just happened to come back from a relaxing vacation in Hawaii, or are at a massive party having the time of their life. Meanwhile, we're lying idly on our bed, wishing we could have similar experiences. What we fail to realize, however, is that even if we attained all those things we're certain we desire, we would still end up unhappy. It is our intrinsic nature that makes us constantly and perpetually desire the things we don't have. You might think that by getting a million dollars you'd instantly attain a state of pure happiness, but you would be wrong. The instant you fulfill your desire, a multiplicity of other desires will begin to pop up in your unsatisfied mind. Once you have one million dollars, you'll want ten. Once you have ten million, you'll want fifty million, and so on. This pattern of craving can continue endlessly, depriving us of the feeling of satisfaction we so deserve. This is why we must let go of our desire for things we don't have, and be content with the things we do. Lao Tzu advises us to lessen selfishness and restrain desires. Instead of spending so much of your time and energy wishing you could have your friend's expensive car, release your need and desire for those things and focus on what you currently have. Focus on the things that you, more likely than not, are taking for granted and underestimating. Think about the fact that as you watch this video, you have access to pretty much anything you want on the internet, that you're likely well-fed, that you enjoy shelter, that you have relatively good health and many other things. It is a natural disposition of ours to turn a blind eye to the things that we already have and focus solely on the things we wish we could have. You get the life partner of your dreams, for example, but once you're in a relationship with them, you begin to take them for granted. This disposition is endemic. It's virtually synonymous with the human condition, yet it's something that, with the right principles, we can overcome. As mentioned earlier, we need to realize that we're already connected to everything in our lives that we think we're missing, such as love, happiness, and inner peace. We just have to align ourselves the right way. And one of the ways to align ourselves is to be content with little, 
appreciate and be grateful for everything we have around us. Number six, accept your flaws. In our final quote from Lao Tzu for this video, he says, when you accept yourself, the whole world accepts you. One of the core teachings of Taoism is to let go of the need to fight against our own nature, against our own flaws, and accept ourselves for who we are. According to Taoism, when we learn to accept ourselves, to be tolerant to our flaws and kinder to ourselves in general, when we start to treat ourselves with more understanding and acceptance, the rest of the world will follow. They'll start to treat us better as well. The more we accept ourselves, the more the entire world will accept us. Many times part of what causes us to obsess over our imperfections and be highly focused on our flaws is the need for approval from others. We think that if we're not perfect and if we don't have everything in order, other people won't like us, and because of this, sometimes we dislike some of our own qualities so much that they end up clouding our view of the world. And this can happen despite the thousands of positive characteristics that we might possess. Imperfection abounds everywhere. It's part of our intrinsic nature, and telling ourselves that we would be happier if we could just fix them is not a path you want to go down. So, for example, if you feel you're overweight, instead of tying the value that you place on yourself to your weight, you can simply choose to release the need for control, cease resisting your flaws, and accept yourself for who you are. Choose to love yourself the way you are and recognize the imperfections that bother you so much. If you're overweight but you start to accept yourself and not focus so much on this, you'll gain confidence in yourself, you'll treat yourself more kindly, and now that you're presenting yourself more confidently and happily, other people will have a better impression of you overall, and they'll generally overlook your extra kilograms. Thus, don't try to desperately change yourself. Of course, you can join a fitness center and be mindful about what you eat, but you shouldn't worry about the result, and it shouldn't be because of what others think of you or for wanting to look good. It should be because of the other benefits of exercising, which makes you feel good. Our brain is made to solve problems, and if your physical appearance or a behavioral trait is seen as a problem and you decide to solve it, you will put a lot of pressure on yourself and will create a lot of negative energy around you which will be felt by other people. And that is a recipe for disaster, for it only amplifies your negative qualities even more and makes you suppress your positive ones even more. Whenever you try to resist the fact that you're not as slim as you want to be or not as rich as your neighbor, your inner turmoil will be let loose. It is therefore imperative upon us to take it all in, and thus to enjoy the smooth flow of your life, make no distinctions between negative and positive, and accept yourself completely.